Welcome to In Her Voice. My name is Kelly Covert, and I am passionate about helping women live authentically by listening to their inner voice. Get ready to be inspired by women of all walks of life that have set aside their should be's and not good enoughs and are standing in their true voice, the voice of wisdom that each and every one of us has inside. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 22 of In Her Voice. I'm so thankful that you decided to join me today because I have Casey O'Rourke on the podcast today, and we are talking about the topic of surrender. And let me tell you, it is on fire. I mean, truth bombs dropping left and right. This is one of my favorite interviews so far that I've done, and I have had the honor of getting to know Casey on a really personal level in a podcasting group that we're in, and my goodness, you guys are going to totally just be in love with her. And we really talk a lot about surrender and how that shows up in relationships, how relationships with your spouse, with your partner, with your children, with your parents becomes a really good practicing ground to practice surrendering, to practice letting go. And you know, when we talk about surrendering, really what we're talking about is just laying down your attachment to the outcome letting go and just being present in the moment. One of my favorite things that we talked about was this idea of surrendering to our own imperfection, surrendering to who we are right now in this moment and letting go of this need to control every single thing and every single person in my life. If you really think about it, it becomes an act of freedom when we surrender because we're not tethered to what we think has to happen or to what we think we should look like or our lives should look like. So this is a really, really powerful discussion. Casey is a facilitator of personal growth and development, and her work encourages parents to discover the purpose of their journey while also providing them with tools and a shift of mindset that allows them to deepen their relationships with themselves and their families. And all of us who are parents out there, we know that one of our biggest transformational journeys in life is being a mother. And so I love how Casey gives us tools to deal with our kids and to also at the same time get to know who we are and start loving ourselves even more. She is a certified positive discipline trainer, and she has led countless groups through workshops and classes that have left them feeling empowered and exciting about parenting. She offers online classes and individual coaching at joyfulcourage.com. And like I mentioned, she also has her own podcast, the Joyful Courage podcast, which I highly encourage you to check out. So sit back and relax and Casey and I are going to dive in to the topic of surrender. Welcome, Casey O'Rarty, to the In Her Voice podcast. I am so excited to have you here, friend. I am really excited to be here, Kelly. Thank you so much for the invitation. Oh, yeah. So just to let you guys know, Casey and I met in a podcasting group, and that's how I got connected with her. And then I started listening to the Joyful Courage podcast, her podcast, and I was like, dude, I got to get her (laughs) on the show. (laughs) Yay, I'm so glad. Thank you. You're welcome. And we decided together, I think, I think this was a mutual decision, (laughs) that we were going to have the theme of the show today to be surrender. Mm Mm-hmm. Because when we're really connecting with our inner voice, we have to do that. I mean, it's necessary. It's, it's, you can't avoid the surrender. And so I thought maybe we could start with you telling us a story from your life where you really had to butt up against that and how that worked for you, how you came through that. Oh, my gosh. It is... It's so a theme in my life right now. It's a theme that's coming up in the community of parents that I serve, 
that I'm currently in relationship with and like in my personal life and in it and most recently last night <laughs> I just came off of a training weekend I am a coach for a coaching and facilitation program called Elevate through a company called Boldly Embody Life and so I got to be in service of that this weekend with you know a group of people that are never you know when somebody says how are you it's not just like what you say when you first see your friend. It's really like, no, I'm I'm totally open to the deep dive. Mm-hmm. So that was the entire weekend. And, and I'm currently navigating some pretty big dynamics in my relationship with my husband. We have been married, it'll be 18 years, oh my God, in August and together, you know, for 22 years, so half my life. And relationship, as we all know, ebbs and flows and 22 years in is not the same as that first blissful six weeks. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's there's things that are coming up. And and I got some coaching around this with the people that I was with this weekend. And, you know, and of course, what does it look like to surrender? And I are we allowed to swear on this podcast? Go for it. Okay, great. So my response to surrender with my body and my words was, fuck you. <laughs> and you know? I think that you're not alone in that. <laughs> like, how dare you tell me? And I think it was because I was hearing the word surrender. I was hearing also words like let go. What does it mean to be in acceptance around this? And all I could think of was if I surrender, if I let go, if I'm in acceptance of this, I'm somehow condoning what's happening. Going deeper into that, I recognize that I'm, I don't trust my husband. I don't trust my husband to make decisions for himself, which also... I get to be the hero. I get to be the savior of everybody. I get to continue to sit in the role of controller of everything around me. And so the idea of surrender is really uncomfortable. And then I get home last night and I'm pretty high on the whole weekend and this whole juicy experience because you know, that was a, a conversation I had on Friday. And then on Saturday, I was able to participate in an activity where we were all invited to go out into nature. I live in the Pacific Northwest, so that's always a beautiful invitation. And But I just had this conversation hot on my mind. I had my journal with me, and I just said, you know, I'm going to use this opportunity to journal in nature versus kind of the directions were listen to nature, see what, let nature take you on a, on a trip. And so I guess I did a both and there. And I was writing in my journal and what I started, and I looked down at one point and I saw that there was, I was on a patio that where there were bricks laid in the ground and they were, and there was a lot of weeds and overgrowth. And I was looking at those bricks and I just thought for a moment, I thought back to when they were probably laid and how the ground was, the ground cover was mowed down and it was probably really neat and tidy that first day and how regardless of how we laid they laid down the bricks the the weeds are going to continue to grow through the cracks and that led me to thinking about the way that the dynamic I'm in with my husband was modeled for me and it never occurred to me to compare or to just notice the dynamic that I'm in with my husband to the dynamic that I saw as a child. And then even to go back further and and knowing that there was part of this kind of dynamic existed in a generation before. And then beyond that, I don't know, but I'm a parent educator and passionate about what I do because I get to shift some patterns that I lived through as a child in the mother-daughter relationship. And it was this huge epiphany because I recognize, like I was kind of, I guess, kind of in a vacuum around like, oh, my work is all around the parent child, not seeing this pattern that was alive and well and current in my relationship with my husband. And that was so big. And so when I got home, I wanted to share with him. And I had for the first time, I think, really ever in that relationship, I went into it with that surrender and non-attachment. I didn't I didn't go into the conversation like he's going to feel, think, say this mm-hmm. or this is how I'm going to change everything. There was no agenda. There was no attachment. It was really just a, a sharing from my heart 
to share. It was sharing to share and to being really open and present to whatever showed up. Typically, our pattern is I go in and he either gets defensive or withdraws. And and he was in his receiving of the of my share, he was really present. And it just kind of was this embodiment around what I believe, which is we are in the creation of our experiences. You know, and granted, other people are in that, you know, co-create with us, but we can never separate ourselves out. And that's absolutely what I was doing in this current challenge that I'm having with my husband is I was not seeing myself as in it and feeding it and nurturing it. I was seeing myself as how hard can I do I need to shake you for you to get your shit together and do what I ultimately want you to do. So, yeah, that was my really long answer to that. No, it was the current surrender experience. <laughs> and I think there's so much there that we can all relate to. I feel that as women who are high achievers, mm-hmm. I think that a lot of people who listen to this podcast would consider themselves to be a perfectionist or like mm-hmm. me, a recovering perfectionist. Controlling is how we keep ourselves safe. Yeah. If we can control everything and every person and every circumstance around us, then we can predict what our lives will look like. And I think where that gets frustrating is we do that and we put all of our energy into doing that and our lives still don't look how we want them to look. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't understand that. There's a disconnect there of thinking that the controlling will work mm-hmm. and then not understanding why it doesn't work. Yeah. And I one of the themes that we talked about a lot this weekend was assumption and expectation in the context of, of coaching relationships. But I think it can be expanded into any relationship. And I know that I put my husband in, in a box, like even going into conversations, I've already decided how he will respond And so then when he responds that way, I'm pissed. Or if he responds differently, I'm like, I'm kind of off kilter because it's like, well, wait a minute, that was unexpected. And it's just like, I think that the surrender really came with with not like I didn't put him in the box. I just and it wasn't even I didn't make it about him, even though we were having I was sharing about something that we are both experiencing. I just, and this was some great coaching that I got from my dear friend, Cheryl. She said, you know, quit, try, she didn't say quit. She said, try sharing your experience instead of continuously coming at him to dig up his experience. Like, I wonder what would happen. Yeah. If we give our loved ones that space to Mm -hmm. be themselves Mm -hmm. rather than trying to make them who we want them to be, what would that look like? Right. And what is the underlying message? Like, I love you. I accept you. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I'm curious to know what your self-talk was going into that conversation with him. How did you really get yourself in a space of surrender before you began? Mm, That's a great question. The the funny thing was I had a couple people at the house. Um, I had some guests that were staying the night. And so I made a conscious decision um, to go up. I knew he was going to be going to bed before I went to bed. And I, I just made this conscious decision that 10 minutes right here, right now is valuable. And now's the time. Gosh, I, you know, it was just, I don't know if the, it, it, I think the difference this time was it wasn't a lot of self-talk. It was really more of way of being like, it was really more of being intentional about, like, you know, if you think about center of gravity, I have a mentor that talks about center of gravity. And when we make things about us, you know, we, the center of gravity is, is on us, um, making it about somebody else, the center of gravity is on them, or we can hold it in the middle. And I think that I have been often, you know, every time we get a chance, actually, I will, you know, open up this conversation, and I push all of the energy on him. And this, what happened last night is even as I was speaking to him, and sharing, like, I noticed the tone of my voice, I noticed the words that I was choosing. But I also noticed that I really, like, consciously tried to hold the energy in me, in my heart, So as, and that was, I think for me, 
that was how I was able to just really authentically share in a way that wasn't, I wasn't on the offense. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh, it totally makes sense. It's about the intention. Yeah. So the way of being became the intention. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can all really learn from that because we have the ability to tap into that every single day in every single conversation we have, in every single interaction we have, even if that interaction is with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So this idea of being intentional and tapping into that way of being. And I like that because so often the self-talk can be negative. Yeah. And and if we can kind of move ourselves out of that and into our bodies more, mm-hmm. I mean, that's really what I hear you saying, that it was like in your body, that feeling. Yeah. And I think that, that that becomes really powerful for us as women. So back to this idea of surrender. So I feel like what I hear you saying is you surrendered your expectations. Mm-hmm. You surrendered your controlling. But during the conversation, did you find you had to surrender more? Or after, did you find mm-hmm. you had to continue that? Was it was it like, okay, I'm done? Or was it a practice that kept going? It was it was a practice that kept going throughout. And it was a short, and I, I it wasn't even really a conversation. It was really just a share. However, at the end, I had a question for him He's having some health stuff. And so I, he has a doctor's appointment today. So after I shared, I asked him if I could go to his doctor's appointment with him today. And this weekend when I had talked about this with my friend who's a nurse and a coach and amazing, she said, you know, what if you asked him? And immediately when she suggested that I ask him, I was like, oh, no way. He is not going to want me there. Right. Because I'm totally that like helicopter wife. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm really good at not being a helicopter parent, but you know, specifically this weekend, I've really kind of, my ex- my perspective has expanded around how I show up in my relationship with him. And I, and the answer was yes. Mm. And I think that it absolutely came from the fact that even when I, I wasn't gonna ask that question. And then I had the experience that I was experiencing in the sharing with him. And I was okay, I realized in the moment, like I'm okay if it's a no. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm gonna surrender to whatever shows up. I'm not gonna make any stories about what will show up. And I think because I was able to be with him in such a present, non judgmental way, he really experienced the depth of my love for him and for us as a unit. And, didn't have to close off to protect himself and instead was invited to open up and to be a yes. So Mm, that's so good. I feel what happens to me a lot of times when I come into conversations like that. And I will say, I, I can totally empathize with this with your husband because I feel like I'm very similar in Mm -hmm. the way that I approach him. And I have to remember that I've been sitting with whatever it is that I want to talk to him about for a while. I've been processing it through for a while. And I think a lot of times I will come to a conversation like this with the expectation that they need to know their answer Mm -hmm. right then Mm -hmm. because I know mine right then without taking into account that they might need to sit with that. Well, and I think too, Kelly, I mean, you and I do what we do, right? We have convert, like, I'm sure that we are having an intentional podcasting conversation, but the conversations that you find yourself in during the day, I'm sure are similar, you know, to this one. I, this is the way I speak to people. This is, you know, these are the, this is the language that I use and I often will forget and I love it. I love the deep dive. Like, let's talk about emotions. Let's talk about what you're rubbing up against. And I, and then it's funny that I'm so surprised when he's like, no, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's like, what do you mean? You don't want to talk about self-worth and self-doubt. He's like, um, or, or sometimes the response will be like, I don't even really know what that, what question you're asking right now. Um, so realizing too, that meeting them where they're at is, can be really powerful and and really is respectful, I think. 
And I think too, even in relationship to our own selves. Mm -hmm. So for people who are listening to this podcast, all of you ladies may be thinking, I don't really like to talk about that stuff either. Right. And that's totally okay. But coming to this acknowledgement that that stuff is happening, right. whether or not you talk about it, yeah. is important. And figuring out a way for yourself to process through it on your own, to come to terms with it on your own, is a really important life practice, a life skill that we need to develop. Yeah, and what's coming up for me right now is... I love you people. God bless you for not wanting to talk about it because it's uncomfortable, of course, right? It's uncomfortable. It's messy, especially when we start to realize things like, oh, shit, I've actually been a part of creating this. Yeah, You know, like I can't place all the blame on my husband or my daughter or my mother or whoever, right? We're all in the creation of the experiences that we're having. And that is so uncomfortable. I think where, where surrender shows up is when we can recognize that to let go of the judgment and really just kind of, and I'm, I'm like, even as I sit here, I'm opening my arms out, my palms are up, like just surrendering, letting go, giving it up. I mean, I feel like, you know, it's cliche to say everything happens for a reason, but I, I'm a really big, strong believer that life happens for you, everything is this juicy opportunity to move you forward. And when I can remember the discomfort of right now is actually gonna take me to a better place, a place where I can flesh out these emotions that I'm actually kind of just stuffing or pushing aside. If I can live through the discomfort of working through it, navigating it, just surrendering to the fact that it's it's time Right. If I don't, nothing's going to change. If I want life to be different, I have to be different. I think that it, it just surrendering actually takes us to a better place. And I think that where I was having a hard time with surrender this weekend when it was first brought up was was I was afraid. I was afraid that surrendering meant doing nothing. And that's a distinction I think that we should make because those are two different things. Right. And you said you felt that surrender meant condoning yeah can you talk about that a little bit because i think that's important yeah you know it shows up really obviously in the parent-child relationship right and you read the books you read the blogs you listen to the podcasts and what you'll hear what will happen is you know accepting the child you have and i think that that is that is a form of surrender like accepting the child that you have you know, and you know, and our kids come with all sorts of personalities and temperaments and needs and wants and and it's a crazy <laughs> trip of a experience to be a parent. That's a nice and, way to put it. Yeah, right. It's a <laughs> mind melt. Um, but when we can, so so our kids. So imagining that child in the grocery store who's. This is really obvious, right? That the preschool child who's having a hard time on, you know, wants the gum that you won't buy and they just melt down, fall apart, screaming, crying, crying, screaming. You're getting pulled into that energy and it becomes like you need to stop now. And all of a sudden we are mad at our children for not having the tools, the emotional tools to handle the physical experience that they're having with disappointment, right? And so in that experience, like what I, when I would tell a parent, like surrender to that, like this is what's happening right now. Surrendering to that might look like squatting down and holding them and loving them, maybe getting out of line and letting people pass you so that you can be with them as they move through their emotion and get to the other side of it versus making them feel bad for not having the tools that they could have used to handle disappointment. And then looking ahead, I have a 14 year old daughter and she offers me lots of opportunities for this. You know, teenagers, their brains are actually developing their re their re what they call it pruning. So there's all this like massive growth zero to 12 and then there's a pruning process 
happening in brain development where there's a kind of a cutting away while simultaneous new development. And the new development starts from the back of the brain and moves forward, which means the emotional part of their brain is developing faster than the logical part of their brain. I just read a great article about this. And so the emotions that show, it's not necessarily that they're, it's the hormones. It's actually the brain development because they're, they're almost equally as surprised by their emotional outbursts as oh, we yeah. are because mm-hmm. it's like, whoa. And so for me, like the more information I can read and learn and take in about like the biological situation that's happening with my kids, the less I have to take personally. Yeah. Right? Like the eye roll isn't about me. Right. Right? The the, the door slamming isn't about me. And when I can surrender to the, the fact that our brain is developing the way it's developing and that's just what it's going to look like, then the 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 better I can show up for her in conversation around, you know, sometimes you're going to not appreciate what I have to say. You're going to not like the boundary. So let's brainstorm some ways that that will be helpful for you to express how you feel about it, right? So I can help her in this tool development because I've surrendered to the fact that it's just what she's learning to do. Right. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh, it makes total sense. And I have a 14-year-old son. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't it so crazy? It, well, and <laughs> to, to add to the complication, he's also on the spectrum. So, oh, so we're dealing yeah. with someone who has even less skills of being able to know what's happening emotionally right. versus logically. And I tell you what, like we have a therapist. <laughs> Thank God for her. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes it's just nice for me to go in with my son and sit with her for an hour and watch this person who's not completely emotionally invested in my child deal with him. And she'll say things to him like, I validate you. I validate what you're feeling. And I'm like Mm -hmm. taking notes for myself. I learn just as much as he learns in those sessions because it's really about understanding exactly what you said. It's not about us. Yeah. We make it to be that. And this is the same with all of our relationships. Mm-hmm. Are we having all of our relationships revolve around who who we are and who we right. think we're supposed to be? Or are we looking to that person to see how we can serve them, to see how we can love them, to see how we can meet them right where they are, like you said? Yeah. And, and even like what's just coming to me right now is even in, are we using relationships to looking for validation (laughs) right right i mean that is crazy pants how we do that and 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 i think it's we're probably around the same age i think that there was this big push in the 80s where you know that's the self-esteem movement where all the adults right we've got to give kids a good self-esteem and well-meaning loving adults but what real self-esteem is is a learning and an appreciation for who you are through your experiences and so all the good jobs and you're so smart and you're so pretty and you're the best on the team and everyone gets a medal like it's given us I think a whole generation of us this extrinsic place to look for am I okay versus an inner knowing yeah. that I'm okay, right? And and uh, cuz I'm an approval junkie. Oh my but- gosh, I talk about this all the time. And <laughs> you know, I teach women how to understand that they're worthy now. Mm-hmm. Like you are worthy right this minute. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do anything to earn that. Right. And you're right, I think we are about the same age and I really had to understand that I was so addicted. I would go from one hit of approval to another hit of approval. And I never recognized that I could give that to myself. Yeah. By just understanding that for me, what I have to surrender to is that I will never be perfect. Mm -hmm. That I will never be this magnificent being of perfection that I hoped to be. Mm -hmm. And that that is so beautiful and so wonderful and so perfect in the imperfectness of that. Mm -hmm. And when I feel like I I have to lay that down on the altar every single day. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Especially too with being a mom. Oh, gosh. 
right? Totally. Yeah. It's never going to look the way you think it's supposed to look. No. Also, so I, I got to do some pretty phenomenal trainings this year around transformation. And uh, one of the patterns that was first pointed out to me, and once it was pointed out, now she shows up all the time. Well, now she's been showing up this pattern, but I just, now I'm like, oh, there you are. Now you have a is name for her. This, yeah, it's this teacher's pet gold star. Oh, yeah. And I, now, and it's funny because I think once we learn something about ourselves, it's really easy when that pattern shows up to be like, oh, there it is. And like marinate in it. And I wonder, and in my experience, it's been really powerful instead to grow my awareness around when the teacher's pet shows up. And she showed up a lot this weekend. I mean, I was, it, it you know, she's my best friend, turns out. <laughs> and it becomes instead of like, oh man, I totally just slipped into that and uh, I'm beat up, beat up, beat up. It becomes like, oh, there you are. Right. You know, there you are. You know what? You can hang out. You got to sit in the passenger seat. Yeah. Or you got to mm-hmm. sit in the back seat because I'm good. I had such a very real experience of this last week. I'll just share really quick. Yeah. I had to have some dental work done and I hate going to the dentist. Like I I could think of a thousand things (laughs) that I would rather do besides doing that. And before I went, I was kind of sitting with it and thinking about how I was going to manage that a little bit. And so I decided I was going to take my phone which has an audiobook on it and headphones and I was just going to plug in and I I gave myself permission to not do small talk. Awesome. And to not be the good girl, right? To not mm-hmm. feel like, you know, I have to be wonderfully nice. And it's not that I was rude or anything. It's just like normally I would go in like you say and pretend like everything is okay and pretend like I'm having a great time. Mm-hmm. And I realized that it was that pretending that made me feel bad. Mm -hmm. It wasn't actually being at the dentist. It was the me pretending to be someone that I'm not that felt so wrong to me. And so in that time, I was there for about two hours. I just allowed myself to be who I was in that moment. I didn't judge it. And by the end of the appointment, I was fine. I was back to my normal self. I could talk. Mm -hmm. It was good. But it was a real lesson to me of accepting who I am in each Mm -hmm. moment and being okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. So I really encourage all of you who are listening to, it's like coming to this place of being honest with yourself about who you are, Mm -hmm. not about who you should be or who you want to be, but like, who are you right now? What do you have to lay down right now to be fully accepting of you? I love that. It's beautiful, right? Yeah, yes. I wanna jump backwards a little bit because one of the things that you brought up was this idea of um, passing down generational stories. Mm -hmm. So things that we get from our mama, and in your context, it was about sort of the relationship that your parents modeled for you. Mm Mm -hmm. and how you you took that on. So can you talk a little bit about what are some strategies that we can use to start to recognize these generational stories and then really start to break those down and and make decisions based on what we want instead of what we know? Right. Well, I think the first thing I want to start with is that it's not easy. Like I don't want to, you know, talk about this from a place of, oh, just figure it out. And it's so easy. So, you know, 18 years or however long you lived at home, that's a lot of modeling. And we have our experiences as young people. And in our experiences, we do what we need to do to survive. Right. And, um, and we all have our stories of how that looks. And then we find ourselves out in the world and in relationships and in experiences. And again, we're still kind of learning and adding to to that lens that we see the world out of, the lens that we see ourselves in the world. And I, you know, for me, it was really having kids that all of a sudden it was like, holy shit, that model actually lives inside of me. 
Mm-hmm. Even though I, I, you know, it was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be that way. I'm not going to make my daughter feel the way that I felt sometimes. I found myself in it, in it. And, and when I talk about it, it's like <laughs> the image that comes up is the yellow brick road. And there's like a beckoning. I remember this one particular time my daughter was like three. I was overwhelmed. And I mean, everything inside of me was give it to her. Just lay it. She was three. Yeah. And I was pissed. And it was it was that it was a pivotal moment. And it was that that was the moment where I, I all of a sudden became so aware. And my son and I talk about the emotional freight train. And, you know, you you get on the emotional freight train or it picks you up and you don't always realize that you're riding the train. You're just on it. But the minute you can, the, the minute you say, oh, I'm on, I'm on the train right now, that's your choice point. That's when there's space to either decide, realize that you can decide, right? I'm either going to stay on and make, continue to make everybody around me feel bad, or I'm going to do something different, take care of myself, walk away, take deep breaths, some small stepping stone to get me off of this path of destruction, mm-hmm. right? And it, and it's really, a, it's a choosing in every day, yeah. um, sometimes multiple times a day because <laughs> it's, you know, it's an emotional experience to be in relationship and we only know what we know and our bodies will go to what's familiar every time. Yeah, they sure will. And I think what I love about what you're saying is this idea that, yes, you know, our mothers and our fathers and the people around us modeled this for us. But as adults now, we get to choose. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to make that decision. And Mm -hmm. if we're just riding the train by accident and we don't even realize it, we're missing out on our most powerful way to transform our life. Yeah. And I feel like too, it's that, you know, it's that in that autopilot where it's so disempowering. Oh yeah. You You know, like like a victim, total victim town. And, and I also must say that I also had a mom who, who modeled extreme love as well. It was a pendulum swing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so there's that. And, and I can feel the pendulum swing. I experience, I, I know what that experience is. So the other piece was the compassion that showed up for me through my parenting journey for my mom. Yes. Right? And talk about surrender, mm-hmm. right? I was really held on to this idea that I needed something from her, whether it's an apology or a, an acknowledgement. Like I was really stuck on, well, we'll be able to be in relationship once she owns up. And now being a mom and being as far into the journey as I am, like, I don't, I don't, we have a really good relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and there's been small instances where she's made references that leave me knowing that she was doing the best she could with the tools that she had. I so believe that. And that was a real journey for me too, in, in that compassion piece with Mm -hmm. my mother and being able to look at her life and what she brought down from her parents, which wasn't, it wasn't nearly as easy as what I had to deal with, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. just recognizing her in that moment. Like Mm -hmm. she was doing the best that she could. And it was really interesting for me because just last year, in a moment where we weren't really even talking about this kind of stuff. I remember we were sitting around the Thanksgiving table and we were kind of joking about things that had happened when we were kids. My brother was there and it was just in this flash of a moment, my mom said, you know, I just want to apologize because I don't think I was the best mom I could have been. And it was so emotional for me and it was funny because my brother kind of tossed it off like oh mommy you know don't be silly and i and i just looked her in the eyes and i said thank you Mm -hmm. because it it almost became for me the end of that of that journey of feeling like i needed that and i wasn't ever going to get that from her until i didn't need it anymore yeah you know what else is uh that I've been thinking about too lately and that has actually, cause this, it's so interesting how 
things show up when you're in it, it's like showing up everywhere. Yeah. We're having a lot of family of origin conversations in my membership group with the moms that are in my program. And and something that I keep coming back to is we, we like, and you have a 14 year old. So, mm-hmm. you know, first it's like, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm going to have a baby. And you don't really know what it's going to be like to have a baby until that baby is in your arms and you're experiencing it, regardless of what you've seen, read. You know, and then it's like one day they'll be teenagers, one day they'll be teenagers and you don't know what it's going to be like. And then like every day I'm I'm thinking, oh, my God, whoa, like (laughs) this is so crazy. But I also and and, there's two things here. So one is I don't know what it will be like to be the mother of, of adult children and to have all of this history that we've experienced all of my mistakes inside of that history as a part of our relationship. So there's that piece, but also, you know, and this was part of the experience I had this weekend, not with my husband, but with my daughter who happened to um, get to go to a two day teen transformation workshop, which was amazing for her. And she shared a little bit about it, um, specifically about one belief that she's been holding on to that I completely fed into. And I had to apologize. And it really, it was, it, and I'm great at apologizing. Like I own my behavior. This particular thing was like, I could feel it, how it was so painful to me to recognize how much pain I had caused that she was holding on to. And when I think about my own mom, You know, we've had things come up like the same kind of thing that you're talking about at Thanksgiving where all the kids are together and we're like, yeah, remember when you did that? And she's like, I never did that. And I I remember thinking to myself like, wow, how can I have such a vivid memory of something? And she doesn't remember it. And but, you know, but really what we were asking her to remember was a time where she was really hurtful. Right. And and the and and it's like 30 years later. You know, 35 years later, I mean, I can, I can, I have a whole new appreciation for the why that there's got to be some sort of, you know, defense mechanism to protect us from, you know, not only pain that we experience, but pain that we've caused. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I think there comes our theme of surrender again. It's just this continuous practice of laying down who you think you should be of laying down even maybe who you think you are and saying, I am enough in this moment right now Mm -hmm. and giving yourself that love. That is so important. The love that you would willingly give your kids, give it to Mm -hmm. yourself. Love it. So I have one more question for you before we wrap up. And that is what is your inner voice saying to you right now? Oh, my, my inner voice right in this moment is saying is so full of gratitude because this was such a juicy, deep conversation. So I'm just really grateful to you as the guide of the conversation, but also, you know, and even as I talk, I'm so grateful for the women who came before me in my line and my daughter and the women that will come after me and my place of awareness in that and the willingness, the desire, for whatever reason, I'm the one that is doing the work to shift some really long held patterns and beliefs. And and I'm just grateful that I get to be the one, even though sometimes I'm pissed about it. (laughs) I'm grateful. (laughs) And I'm so grateful to you too, for being here to share this with us. So Casey, why don't you let people know how they can listen to your podcast and find you on social media and all that fun stuff? Great. So my website is joyfulcourage.com. If you go to joyfulcourage.com slash podcast, you will have access to my show. I am. You can also find my show on your favorite podcast apps. You can listen to me through iTunes or Google Play. However you're listening to this show, you'll be able to find my show. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Joyful Courage. I have a closed group for parents on Facebook called Live and Love with Joyful Courage. And I'm a coach. I do online classes as well and have, like I mentioned earlier, a membership program. 
So I just, I'm, I've been called to serve parents, moms specifically, and just really grateful to, to get to. Fantastic. And yeah. I will put all of that, those links and everything on my show notes page at kellycovert.com. Just click the podcast tab and it will take you there. And as we close up, Casey, I just want to take this moment to honor and acknowledge you. Thank you mm. for your willingness to share so deeply and so real with us. I just feel that authenticity. And that's something that I really value and I, I can just feel it in you. Mm. So thank you for being willing to show up as your real self today. Well, thank you for holding space for it. Kelly. You're welcome. And yeah. I'm sure we'll be talking soon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview as much as I did. I have to let you know when I was going through to edit it and listening to it the second time, I was literally taking notes for myself because I just felt like there was so much good information there, especially in how she shared her story with her husband, because I think that that's a place where I could really practice that idea of surrender in my own life. And so I hope that you got some really good takeaways. And if you found yourself nodding your head or agreeing or thinking about our conversation after it's done, I would encourage you to share this with a friend. Let them know all of the goodness that you're finding here at In Her Voice. So in your podcast app, there's usually a share button and you can text it to them. You could send them an email. You could share it with them on Facebook, but don't keep this to yourself. Let's spread the word so we can all really begin to live in this place of understanding that we are worthy now that we are enough and that we have the power of our inner voice right inside of us to help us, to guide us, to show us what is next in our lives and to help us with this idea of surrender as well. And the other piece of it is if you really feel like you're getting value from this show, if you look forward to the interviews and the solo episodes every single week, if you're excited about sharing them and excited about what we're talking about on the show, I invite you to join me in becoming a worthy crusader. And a worthy crusader is someone who supports in her voice financially financially and energetically. So if you want to learn more about how you can really join with me to create a movement of women who believe in themselves right now, and gosh, we need that. I encourage you to pop on over to kellycovert.com backslash together and become a patron of the show. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who have done this already. I'm so grateful. I'm so blown away by the power of you, the power of us really coming together. And I feel that if we can get this message out to more and more women, it is really going to change the world literally changed the world. So thank you for being you. Thank you for being world changers. Thank you for understanding your own worth and what you're bringing to the table right this minute. You are worthy. Worthy.